goes to demonstrate uh, the wonderful precinct we have up here, JA. Uh, medical technology, it's one of the key sectors for Australia going forward. Um, and we have great expertise, great skill, great reputation and ability to uh, venture into markets uh, from this platform here in Indo-Pacific and the Asia-Pacific. And so it's tremendous to be here partnering uh, with AstraZeneca today. Uh, we're here today to announce that we have uh, signed a letter of intent with AstraZeneca uh, which will enable uh, to Australia to access, should it be successful, uh, the vaccine for COVID-19 here in Australia, manufactured here in Australia, distributed free to 25 million Australians in the event that those trials prove successful. There are around 160 different vaccine projects around the world today. Um, some of those are, are, are well advanced, like the AstraZeneca uh, proposal and that they're turning up with the University of Oxford. Others are still on their way and looking good too, like in the University of Queensland. There are many others, and uh, Professor Brendan Murphy uh, has, is, is heading up an expert panel, panel which is advising the government on the other programs and the other projects uh, that we can take positions on to ensure that Australia is incredibly well placed uh, to ensure uh, that Australians can emerge quickly uh, in, the, in the event that a, a vaccine is, is developed. This would have to be, as I'm sure Paul Kelly will tell you, who will speak after me, this would have to be one of the biggest worldwide efforts to find a vaccine uh, that we have ever seen in a concentrated period of time. And that concentrated effort, it, it fills me with greater hope. And uh, what we've been able to reach today to put Australia in, 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 the, in the leading pack when it comes to vaccines being made available to our citizens also gives me hope. Uh, in Victoria and Melbourne at the moment, they're doing it the toughest of all. Uh, businesses and people who have been laid off and having their livelihoods disrupted and those who have lost loved ones, over 430 Australians, um, also uh, hoping that others won't fall victim to this terrible virus. And so the search for the vaccine is one thing, but its, it's rapid deployment, uh, should one be found, has also been a key focus of the government and will continue to be. At the same time, we will continue to do everything in every area of activity, working with our state and territory partners to ensure that we are combating this virus each and every day and keeping Australians as safe as we possibly can uh, to save lives and to save livelihoods has always been our approach. Uh, the next step in these arrangements is to see how those trials go, to complete the manufacturing agreements, and they are well advanced, and I feel very positive about those. And then to identify, as I said, other potential vaccine prospects uh, that Australia can partner with. I also want to note that uh, of all the issues I've discussed with uh, Prime Ministers and Presidents around the world, the vaccine has been the most constant of those discussions. Of course, we talk about how we're dealing with the virus in our own country, our testing, our tracing, our outbreak containment, uh, swapping notes, sharing experiences. Uh, but the other discussion that happens in parallel is finding this vaccine and ensure we can mobilise to produce the vaccine. And so while what we're announcing here today is important for Australia, as Australia will also play an important role in supporting our Pacific family. We've had those discussions with the Prime Minister of, of uh, Papua New Guinea and, and Fiji most recently. Uh, but also when I last spoke to President Widodo, this was also uh, an important topic of discussion. Um, we have a, a regional role to play here as well as a domestic role to play here and we will be living up to all of those uh, responsibilities as we progress this day. But today is a day of hope. And Australia needs hope, the world needs hope when it comes uh, to this coronavirus. And should we be in a position for the trials to be successful, we would hope that this would be made available early next year. If it can be done sooner than that, great. Uh, but we are very much in the hands of people wearing white coats, and there's plenty around here today, and they've been doing tremendous work, not just here, but all around the world. And uh, we're putting our hope in their science, uh, in their work, and to ensure that they can bring these trials to a conclusion. The vaccine uh, will need to satisfy all the same standards that all vaccines are uh, expected to live up to here in Australia before they're made available to the product. There won't be any cutting corners, there won't be any undue haste here. Uh, there will be the appropriate controls and protections that are put in place. Um, I'm advised that we'll need about a 95%
vaccination rate across the country. Now, that is the, the normal target range for when you're having a, a vaccination program, and we'll be seeking to ensure that that is widely implemented uh, with our partners around the country to ensure that should the vaccine be available, then we'll be able to move quickly, get it out across Australia, and that we can get Australia back to normal as quickly as we possibly can. But there's a lot of work to do yet. And the people who are doing that work are with me here today. I'll hand you over to Professor Kelly, the Acting Chief Medical Officer, and then Liz will have a few words to say. Uh, come back and take questions then. Let's keep those questions first to the announcement today and then, of course, very happy to uh, cover other, other issues, as I'm sure you would like to. Paul. Uh, thank you, PM. It certainly is a, a, a fantastic day and uh, great news that we are now partnering uh, with uh, AstraZeneca for the Oxford vaccine. It's one of the uh, several vaccines that are in development, as the PM said, over 160 different types, uh, different vaccine candidates are currently in development and in trials, and almost 30 of those in trials in humans now. So uh, this particular vaccine, uh, it's an unproven technology uh, so far, but, uh, but the initial results uh, are very positive in terms of both uh, efficacy, so the effectiveness of the vaccine uh, will be, will be uh, trialled uh, in, in larger groups of human trials over the coming months, but the uh, efficacy in terms of uh, developing uh, antibodies against coronavirus uh, has been shown to be uh, true, uh, as well as the safety in the phase one and, and uh, phase two trials. So uh, they, they've been published in, in peer-reviewed journals, have been checked by other scientists and have been found to be valid. So uh, that amongst a number of other vaccines that have been developed by other companies uh, and other research groups around the world um, are showing great promise. Uh, and so uh, this is an important step. It's, it's the first step uh, in terms of this particular uh, company and this particular vaccine, but there'll be others in the coming weeks and months. We have a strategy to, to work through this, these so-called pre-purchase uh, agreements, uh, as well as looking at, uh, at funding our own research and development here in Australia, particularly in the University of Queensland vaccine. Uh, candidate, uh, but also others and uh, partnering with other, other vaccine uh, potential uh, uh, throughout the world. Uh, that's part of our strategy. Other, other components, of course, is, is being prepared for uh, the vaccine rollout and, and the work that has been guided by our expert committee, uh, as the PM has mentioned, uh, chaired by Professor Murphy. I'm the deputy chair of that committee. The Australian Health Protection Committee also having regular discussions about this uh, particular issue of vaccines uh, and our other advisory groups we have on vaccines. We're, we're used to rolling out large vaccine programs here in Australia. This will be an extremely important one uh, and will be, I'm sure, welcomed by, by all Australians when that is available. I'll leave it there, PM. Please. Hello, everybody. I'm Liz Chatwin, a uh, former welcome to AstraZeneca uh, manufacturing facility on behalf of all our team. Welcome, Prime Minister, and welcome, Professor Kelly. A um, couple of words about our site. This is, our, this is the largest manufacturing facility in Australia, um, but we don't make, make vaccines here. We make a product called Pomacourt, which is exported to Asia Pacific and predominantly to China, 1.2 billion of exports uh, last year. So uh, as a company, we've been partnering with the Oxford University, uh, one of the leading vaccine candidates, and our ambition is to provide broad and equitable access to this vaccine around the globe at no profit uh, during the pandemic. Uh, we're delighted that we've signed this letter of intent with the Australian government. It's the first step, as the Prime Minister and Professor Kelly have said, um, to secure uh, the Australian people with a vaccine. The next steps, of course, are getting down into the details of the contractual agreements, the numbers, the timelines, the doses, the pricing, um, and securing an agreement with our uh, selected Australian manufacturer so we can manufacture the, the vaccine here locally. Should it prove successful, there's no guarantee that this vaccine will protect against COVID-19. We don't even know um, whether how, you know, how long that protection may last or at what dosage. So the science and uh, the data is the priority for us over the next few months. So I'll hand back to the PM for any questions. Thank you. Let's uh, deal with the um, vaccine announcement today and then we can deal with the other matters. So on the vaccine. Prime Minister, yeah. how will you go about making this mandatory? How exactly will that work? Well, I'll ask Paul to comment on this as well. But this is like any vaccine. And uh, as you know, I have a pretty strong view on, on vac vaccines. Uh, being the social services minister that introduced no jab, no play, um, what is important to understand with any of these vaccines, it, it does protect you, it does protect your family, but it also protects the community. 
And as is the case with any vaccine, there will be some individuals who, for quite precise medical reasons, there can be issues with a particular vaccine. They and their safety and their health depends on the vaccines take up more broadly in the community. That's how they get protected. And this is an important part of our vaccine strategy, not just on COVID-19, but more broadly. So we will be seeking uh, its most widespread application, as we do with all important vaccines. But Paul, you may want to talk about how those practices are followed. And we'll be doing that, of course, in partnership with states and territories. Um, thank you, PM. So, of course, the, the first will be a, a, a voluntary uh, call for people, and I'm sure there will be uh, long queues, um, socially distanced, of course, uh, for this vaccine. It will be incredibly welcomed by many. Uh, it will be the absolute ticket to, to get back to some sort of uh, normal society and, and the things that we all love and enjoy. So I think there will be a very strong take-up of the, this vaccine. Of course, there will be some uh, that, for, for medical reasons, as the PM has said, um, will, will not be able, may not be able to, to take the vaccine. But um, there will be very strong uh, campaigns to, to encourage people. Uh, and, and we've had experience before of, of, of linking uh, vaccination with, with other programs. And th all of those things will be looked at over time. But the first thing we have to have is a, a vaccine that's, that works, that is safe and can be rolled out in large numbers. That's the key point. Obviously, No Jab, No Play was about childhood vaccines and you had a very uh, specific incentive there. What are you going to do when there are adults who don't want to Well, we're going to take vaccine. this one step at a time. Um, I don't think offering jelly beans is, is going to be the, the way to do that, as you do with kids. But um, we will we'll, we will take those issues as they present and consider what steps are necessary at that time. Uh, but I would, in the first instance, be encouraging people to take it on. I'll certainly be taking it on. My family would be taking it on. And I'd be encouraging all others to do the responsible thing in, for the sake of not only their own health, but the community's health, and uh, particularly for the most vulnerable. Now, the rollout of this um, will you know, depend on the, the clinical advice as well. Um, we have to wait for the clinical trials to, to identify whether there are any potential side effects for particularly vulnerable communities, and that is not known yet. Uh, but the obvious priori priorities around health workers and people like that, I, I think, is fairly, is fairly apparent. But uh, we'll be guided, of course, by uh, Professor Kelly and uh, our other specialists uh, to, to roll out that program. But I'm. Uh, okay, we'll I just leave that there. 